Hi everybody, this is Mr. Cadet, and in this series of screencasts, I'm going to walk you through a wide variety of web tools for DNA and protein sequence analysis, alignment, structural analysis, etc. Um, this is all in the context of a genetic disease project. Uh, remember that the hypothetical backstory of this project is that you are researchers who've been studying related individuals that share similar symptoms as described up here. Um, and you find that through genetic testing, these patients all share the same partial mutant allele sequence as shown here in this particular sample. Uh, one gen general note, uh, while this particular sequence and its associated symptoms are hypothetical and have not been shown to exist uh, as described, they are entirely based on research and are entirely plausible. So, um, the steps that we're going to have to undergo are listed right here. First, we're going to have to identify the gene um, from which this allele comes from. Secondly, we'll have to figure out exactly what is mutated in the sequence. Um, thirdly, we're going to have to figure out what in the polypeptide would have been different. Um, then we'll do a three-dimensional structural analysis and finally explain the symptoms of this disorder. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take this sequence and blast it against the complete databases. So on the blast search tool, um, we can enter in the sequence. Note you're allowed to put in a name as shown here with a greater than sign beforehand. That'll just be used as an identifier and will not be improperly thought of as actual DNA sequence. Um, down here we can choose which databases to search against and I'm pretty sure we're going to want to search for human because we're assuming this is a human disorder. Scrolling to the bottom, we hit blast and give it a few seconds. Um, keep in mind that this is actually taking your sequence and searching it against complete genomic information. Um, and this took all of about seven seconds. So here we go. Um, these are the results of our search. And it turns out that the sequence that we searched with um, has 88% identity, meaning 88% of its nucleotides are exactly identical to uh, these three sequences, or por portions of these three sequences. Um, the E value indicates the statistical likelihood of these matches being done sort of out of random chance, and that indicates incredibly unlikely uh, matching by random chance. So we have both a cDNA sequence, uh, listed as mRNA, um, and then we have genomic sequences, which are from complete genome sequences. Literally, this is uh, the entire sequence for chromosome 19, all hundreds of millions of base pairs. So here we go. Uh, if we scroll down, we can actually see the first result. And this is, again, a cDNA um, derived from an mRNA um, that encodes normally for a protein called troponin I type 3 from cardiac tissue, apparently. Uh, this right here shows the alignment, meaning these are in the query all of the nucleotides that we entered and searched using. And subject right here is the result. Um, this is uh, showing that a number of nucleotides are identical to what we searched with, but then from here on out we have a bit of a difference. If we want to learn more about this particular gene, uh, we can click up here on GenBank um, or go to a few other resources that I'll show you. Uh, but we're going to start here. On GenBank, this gives us an, a great deal of information. At the very bottom of the page, if we scroll down, we get the complete mRNA sequence. And this is where I'm going to suggest that you start collecting a lot of information on your doc. So um, first of all, um, up above, um, let's take the name of the gene, its identity, um, and whatever other uh, information we can collect. So first, copy, paste, uh, to show that there's a reason for us to believe that this is the correct, um, whoops, the correct choice. Um, we can copy this information down to use as evidence. So E value of 6 times 10 to the negative 31st, and an identity of 88%. We'll probably want to also collect the full mRNA sequence, so we can collect that as well. And let's give it a name. So this will be TNNI3. 
Um, and this will be the wild type uh, nucleotide sequence. Um, so I can just list it as cDNA. And there it is. Uh, one thing you'll want to do is generally keep everything uh, in the same font, and that font is going to be Courier uh, because it equally spaces things out. This is an old typewriter font from ages and ages ago. Okay, next. Um, we'll probably want the protein sequence as well. And so if we go back to that GenBank page, if we scroll up, there are a couple things that will be very useful for you. First, on the left are uh, headings that give you information about that gene. If we click on CDS, which is coding sequence, this tells us the actual coding sequence within that cDNA sequence, showing the start codon, the ATG, and the TGA stop codon here. That's probably something we'll want to note. So if we look at the numbers, oops, right here, somewhere on the order of this 121, 131, 141, so 144 all the way to nearly 780. So let's find this. And let's just do it this way to make things easier. TNNI3 wild type CDS highlighted. And there we go again. Again, this doc is going to end up looking pretty crazy by the time you're done, but collecting all the information you need is probably your first order of business. Okay, also listed under CDS for coding sequence, if we scroll up, is the actual translation. And that's right here. So let's collect that information as well. So again, TNN I3, this will be the protein sequence, wild type. Uh, if you're not aware, wild type means uh, the most typically found in nature, and in this case we're going to assume that means unmutated. Uh, of course that's a very simplistic way of looking at this since um, there are going to be lots of variations on alleles, but uh, this is the uh, most commonly found sequence, at least in the databases. Okay, so now we have a protein sequence, we have a nucleotide sequence for the gene, but what about the mutation? So all we have is a partial mutant allele sequence here, but we do have a full length uh, wild type sequence. So if we want to get a good idea of what's going on here, what we're going to need to do is actually create not a wild type cDNA sequence, um, we're going to want to create um, effectively um, the mutant allele sequence. And so this would be uh, a variant on this. So here's what we're going to do. If we take this entire sequence and copy it, um, obviously this isn't the actual mutant sequence right now, but we can change it. So here's what we're going to do first. Fine. First, um, we have this partial allele sequence, and we do know where this aligns to. If we go to our BLAST results, we can see that that sequence aligns to nucleotides numbers 543 all the way to 662 of the wild type sequence, so 543 to 662. Let me write that down really quickly. 543 to 662. Partial mutant allele aligns to wild type. Those nucleotides, let me double check that. And there we go. So what we can do is highlight these and then replace them. So 543, if we look right here, starts right here, and then 662 is going to be down here. So 543 to 661, 662, just to double check, the first three letters here, GAC, and then ending with CTC. GAC, CTC, we know we've got the correct spot, and watch, all I have to do, hit delete, take our partial sequence, copy it, paste it into this location, and now we have a complete mutant allele sequence. It's certainly not pretty, but we have the completed sequence here. The numbers might not be ideal, but it's correct. All right, step, I guess, three. Step one was figuring out which gene it came from. Step two was creating the mutant allele in full. 
um, step three is going to be figuring out what the result would be um, on the protein as well as figuring out what the actual change in this DNA sequence was. So uh, two things we can do. Um, first, we can actually take these sequences and align them. Uh, a version of it is shown here, uh, but we could actually get a full length alignment. Um, to do so, we would take both of these sequences and paste them into um, an alignment tool. And I've got one right over here. Um, this is called Muscle. Uh, Muscle is a multiple sequence alignment tool that may be useful for you. Um, and I'll just have this as TNN i3 wild type is going to be one to the sequence I enter. And the other one is going to be a TNN i3 mutant. If I hit submit, in just a few moments, um, it will align them in full. And here we go. I can take this entire thing collect it and paste it into my doc and this will be uh, Clustal Alignment using Muscle. Um, here we go. If we take all of this information and again convert it into Courier, it will be a lot easier to compare. All right, our area that does not align is shown right here. What actually happened here, and this is not something that is easily uh, identifiable, is this region of the gene was actually uh, inverted. Again, this is beyond what you need to know. In your cases, your mutations will be something simpler. Uh, an insertion, a deletion, uh, something of that nature, um, hopefully, or some sort of single nucleotide base pair change. Um, hopefully it will not be as confusing as this, which I will not bother uh, describing in detail. But uh, this would be useful for you to see the alignment um, and see exactly where the mutation exists. Okay, next, uh, let's figure out what it did to the protein. Well, this, the coding sequence is right in here um, in the wild type, but here in the mutant. Uh, we know what the wild type protein sequence should be, and here it is. Uh, but uh, let's see what would happen if we took this as the mutant allele sequence. If I copy this and paste it into a translate tool, and here's one, I'm going to choose compact on the output format, a little bit easier to interpret. Hit translate, and it will give me the protein sequence. Collect that. Let's paste that in. TNN I3 mutant protein sequence. Paste that in. And at first glance, it's not exactly obvious what the difference is between this sequence and this sequence. So let's just take them and align them. So uh, taking these, again, the names are fine as long as you precede them with a greater than sign. Copy, we're going to put them into muscle, our multiple alignment sequence tool. Paste those in, two different protein sequences, hit submit, and in just a moment we will see a protein alignment and we should be able to identify what the mutation's effect was. So here we go, here's our protein alignment, I'm going to copy that, and I'll paste this in as the protein alignment. Convert this all back into Courier for easy analysis, and you'll see right here, here's the problem. This is the sequence that we'd expect in a wild-type version of the protein, and instead of these amino acids, these are the ones we find. This is the actual result of the mutation right here, um, and that's where we'll begin our next series of analyses. Okay, before we get too far, let's collect all the information we've generated in the last 13 minutes and just see what we've gotten. So first, uh, the gene has been ID'd as TNN I3 cardiac type. Uh, we've also noted that it's on chromosome 19, 
And if you don't remember where that information is, it's found right here on the BLAST results page. Second, we identified that there was 88% identity between the, mutane, the mutational uh, allele sequence and the uh, wild type sequence, and that the E value was, I believe, six times uh, e to the 10 to the negative 31st, and I can double check that up here, and there it is. Okay, uh, number two, what was the actual mutation? Um, if you look at the BLAST results on the alignment, we'll find that the actual mutation occurs somewhere between, let's see, nucleotides 585 through 620 right here. So let's collect that information. So again, the mutation is, uh, corresponds to nucleotides 585 to 620 of the wild type sequence. Um, and also note that we're only going to limit ourselves to this cDNA sequence. For the purposes of your sanity, we are not going to go into full genomic chromosomal sequence. Okay, uh, what happened to this location? Um, this was an inversion, though again, your mutations will be a good deal easier to identify insertions, deletions, single base pair changes, something of that note. Um, next, uh, we can look at the protein sequence. Uh, the protein alignment shown up here was uh, a change of 12 amino acids. Uh, these amino acids, if we count them over, end up being uh, amino acids numbers 148 through 159, uh, and you can count that over. These are each 60 across, um, so this would be 60, 120, count this over, this ends up being 148 to 159. So this is a total of uh, 12 amino acids changed. And the sequence changed uh, was right here. And I will summarize this as follows. There you go. Um, while we know almost nothing about this gene, uh, over about 15 minutes we've been able to identify all of this information through pure grunt work. What we'll do next is actually try to understand what it is this uh, protein does and how it can relate to the symptoms described at the top of the page.